Hello, everyone, and welcome in once again to the Behind the Bench Coaches Show presented by Mike Hostelow Law. I am your allergy-hampered host, Tom Callahan. It's that time of year around here, so I feel like my voice is a little shot. I'm joined, as I am every week, by head coach Jerome Bichard, and this week's player guest is Alex Storjahan. And, uh, guys, thanks for joining us, as always. I feel like it's been a minute since we've done this. Boom, like a couple of weeks, maybe, since we've last had a show. It has been. I missed you. Oh, <laughs> not that much, though. You yeah. get to stare deep into my eyes for 12 hours on a bus <laughs> yeah. ride. No, uh, yeah, it's been a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of things have happened in a couple of weeks. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and positive things, even though, you know, I think the last time we talked uh, was it the Winston uh, wrapping up the Winston series or no? Yeah, I think it was. That was before. No, it was the week before that. I think. Right. So yeah. you know what the Winston series, uh, which leads right into into tonight uh or you know the upcoming series i mean it was a great series four games I wouldn't have had it any other way um i thought we learned a lot um played well came up with you know a split which is good but i think uh i think you know from last weekend against mortar city where we were even playing at a higher level I got to tell you, coming in, Motor City was the team that worried me. Not so much Port Huron, because I think that Columbus is smart enough not to get into a track meet. But uh, Port Huron, Motor City got so much better during the year. They really improved a lot, but that was a confidence builder. Yeah, no, you know what? I mean, uh, I liked Motor City, too. I, uh, I, I agree with you. Um, I, would even, I would even say that, you know, they even play even a stricter game even a stricter game and a harder game to play against sometimes uh, than Carolina. Um, you know, I think I think they work hard. I think they had a bad game here in Columbus or a bad start here in Columbus, that's for sure. Um, but they play hard. They hit. They're physical. They play uh, pretty direct. Um, where Carolina, uh, they play a little bit more fancy. They like to delay and pull-ups and, you know, all this other stuff or whatever. And I, I mean, um, I think you can get yourselves in trouble if we're not physical against Carolina. But um, I tell you what, on, on you know, Friday going up to – or is it Friday? Uh, Wednesday, sorry. Wednesday, yeah. When, yeah Wednesday. Wednesday in Motor City. I mean, that was a, a great playoff game um, on the road, you know, this and that played exactly the way you needed to play and and just pretty much kept with the system whether it worked the whole game or not it did work we just didn't get any any success for it until you know until storage uh scores a big one to get the game winner with uh three minutes left to go in the game and uh well storage that's a great way to bring you in four goals in the two games i mean the hat trick is great but boy, oh boy, that was a timely goal on Wednesday in game one. That was just, uh, I mean, he couldn't have wrote it any better. Yeah, I mean, we got uh, the OG line back together with Kinger and Kelly, and it was one of our face-off plays we've been running all year. And uh, Kinger It was it. kind of a broken play. Yeah, usually uh, it goes all the way up to the point. Right. It was kind of a little different, but. Yeah. Yeah, my guy got caught sleeping, and luckily it fucking went in so you know talk a little bit about if you will um having that line back together because you guys have been broken up coach broke you up for a little while uh when that happens like what was your mindset once you no longer had those guys with you anymore i mean just keep playing and it doesn't really bother me much who i'm playing with but um you know i think it was good for all three of us to get some fresh fresh legs around us and you know new scenery but we knew we could always come back to those lines so you know, you try to mix and match, see if anything works any better. And if not, we knew we could, we could always come back. So, Does it also show you a little bit about the habits that you kind of develop as the season goes along when you're maybe used to having somebody there like a kinger on one side or, or what have you? Yeah, for sure. You definitely build chemistry with, you know, the guys you're playing with and just watching other guys, you know. Um, you just pick up on their tendencies. So, it, uh, you know, you tend to find better ice, better space on the ice with guys you've been playing with more, so. And boom, when you put that line back together, um, it was it was a little bit different cast of characters up front than when you took them apart uh, uh, about a month and a half ago. Yeah, you know what I mean. 
I think uh, ultimately they went into a little bit of a lull um, and not forgot how to play, but they f forgot what they were doing to have the success that they did before. And, I, I mean, now fast forward to where we are now, you're in the playoffs, and, I mean, they were doing a lot offensively. And they were giving up a lot defensively as far as they're just going for that, not worrying about this. And right now we need to worry about both ends of the ice as much. And if I look at – if you just look at his four uh, – Storage's four goals this weekend, and I preach – been preaching at it all year – it's not how hard it is. It's not uh, where it is. It's how quick it is. And every single one of your goals was a one-time quick, no other than getting the puck to the net. Every single one of his goals. And mind you, there was a couple nice passes to get there. But uh, if you look at all of them, you know, the goal, in, the game winner in Motor City, bang, bang, play. Goalie's not ready. Look at the first one. Dart through two guys. Good dart through two guys. Get a stick on it. Throw it at the net. Goalie's not ready. Second one on Saturday. Friday, sorry. Uh, um, second one on Saturday. Um, Frege makes a nice pass to you. Like I mean, I don't even know how you got it, but didn't think anything but throwing on that. And I think the third one was the same way, wasn't it? Two on one, kind of, yeah. Two on one, two on one, Offense. and again, it was it, it 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 was a bang bang play. You didn't do anything other than get your stick on it and swoop it at the net. Goalies aren't ready. It's not how quick it's or it's not how hard it is. It's how quick and and even half half the time, I guarantee you didn't know where you're shooting. Maybe not. I don't know. You tell me. You tell me. Yeah, that's just repetition. Well, and that's you yeah. know that's it. I, when I and this isn't about me, but when I you could call it a skill. When I play, when I play, when I play, I only shot one spot nine times out of ten. Low stick side, well, low stick side, uh, stick side, more than likely right over the pad, trying to hit that spot. And you know what? You keep doing it. You keep doing it. You keep doing it. Chances are, you do it ten times, one or two of those are going to go in. That's actually that's a really good and, spot to shoot. And, well, yeah, no, it's you know? it's that's where they're susceptible. You know, that's any goalie is. It's just it's just that it, that. And you know what? If you bury your head, I know where the net is. I know where I am on the ice, and I don't even look up. I just know I'm shooting there. The goalie doesn't know where you're shooting. Yep. So, yep. anyways, but uh, now putting that put the line together. Uh, you know, obviously a good. Defense is a is a great offense, and that's good. Um, still got to get guys to finish checks and and eliminate guys. We did some video today, and um, again, it doesn't have to be bone crushing. It just you got to get a shoulder in guys to just to eliminate them and know you know know that they're done, as opposed to he just moves the puck. Oh, I'm two feet away from him, but I'm going to go this way now. I'm going to follow the puck. That guy jumps in right behind you and he gets to play, and all of a sudden he's the guy at the net that uh, gets a good chance. I'm like, if you hit that guy right there, that doesn't happen. You know, and it reminds me too a lot of puck possession teams like the Hawks when they were winning their three cups last year's Colorado Avalanche. They play a lot of puck possession hockey. That's how they win. And it takes a little bit of the lift off Colgan as well. I went back and watched the games, and as I usually do, looking for the saves of the week. And he didn't have to be. Out of his mind, spectacular. He just had to be solid. Yeah, no, he had a couple good. He had a couple big saves. He had a couple big ones. But I mean, uh, um, goaltending in general. I mean, you got to make the easy ones look easy. And you got to make a couple big ones look easy too. <laughs> you know, you know, and, effortless. And, and that's what he. And that's what he does. Uh, um, you know what? We're not going to be perfect, and we're going to give up. Uh, we're going to give up a little bit here and there. But uh, I mean, if we eliminate. Uh, uh, those unbelievable chances. I mean, you know, we're good. Storage. And before we leave Motor City, I want to get your thoughts on it too, because then the big explosion happens at home. Um, and there's there's some reasons that I can point to to try to explain it, but to you, I mean, that seven to two win, that's huge in front of the home fans. What went into that? Like, what changed from Wednesday to Friday? Well, I think it. You know, having such a tough game on Wednesday. 
at home where they were with us the whole game. I think we all played them fairly well. Um, and then just to have it ripped from you with two minutes left, um, that's a heartbreaker. And then to jump right on, right in the vans, I guess, on the bus. But for them, vans to come all the way down. And in the regular season, they didn't score a goal down here. So they, you know, mentally, I'm sure they weren't weren't too thrilled to be here to start with. And then jumping on a team early like that, it's just, it's tough to recover. Yeah, and that, uh, I mean... That that was actually early season Columbus Hallmark. You guys jumped on everybody early. Yeah. So kind of nice to feel that uh, feel that energy coming back, isn't it? Oh yeah. I mean, we haven't. You know, last home playoff game was in the finals last year, and I scored a big one in that game too to take it. And that you know that building may have not been louder since then. So, you know, we were telling the new guys about that, and then all the old guys obviously wanted to get a get another taste of that. So, absolutely. Well, I think uh, well, I think on Friday night, I think Motor City obviously they followed us back from uh, from them. One, we're fortunate enough to have a more comfortable ride than they did. Um, they get back about the same time as us, but for the first time in six months, they saw the sun. <laughs> Um, um, and I say, yeah. you know, we're laughing, but I mean, I guarantee you they all sat outside by the pool or whatever and soaked up the sun, which is the worst thing they could probably do. And maybe, maybe not. They threw in a couple beverages and I, they weren't ready to play on, on Friday night. They just weren't after the first period. Um, I mean, we peppered them probably the first 10 minutes in the second. We still, we had uh three or four prime chances um which we created um babin made two or th- babin woke up and made two or three big saves on a couple two on ones and this and that and then really all they were doing is dumping and chasing and they were putting pressure on us and um you know we weathered their storm a little bit and, and you know for us to stay at that level for 60 minutes with it being five nothing was kind of tough i mean uh um, and again, every time, every time we veer off uh, of what works, we get ourselves in trouble. Yeah, I mean that's that's why the game plan is a game plan, right? Yeah. Stick to it. Good yeah. things happen. No, and then it's just you know, you tell me, is it your arrogance, cockiness, uh, yeah, confidence? Just, you know, oh, I can, I can do this. I know I can. I'm like, I don't need that. I don't need that effort at that time. I need. I just need yeah. you to chip and dump and let uh let kelly go get it i would like to say get let kinger go get it but that's not gonna happen <laughs> um we love you kinger which uh you know all of a sudden you know we get into that mode well we don't need any more which is understandable it's five nothing but at the same time every time we sit back and oh if we're when i when i say sit back storage is on a four check he's the first guy he doesn't go we need to be into our control four check one three one. Not a one two two. Not one two two, and that's what happens. Is oh, we're sitting back, and they do a give and go, and they're right through everybody, and there's their chance. I'm like, that's not the game plan. If storage doesn't go, it's a one three. Everyone needs to be back at the red line, or and keep everything in front of us, and we jump together. And every time we don't go and well we're back but we're not back you know it gets us in trouble so uh, i mean i never once on friday night said sit back i want two guys going give me a high guy all night long everyone's accounted for those two guys don't get beat back beat back by the fourth uh their defenseman coming in for a rush or whatever and you know we're going we're fast forward to winston salem we're going uh we're playing a team that they have very active guys, and they all jump. They all join the rush. They all have four guys going, so uh, this and that. So we need to be a little bit more um, aware of that situation. Well, that's a good spot for us to take a break, and then we are going to come back and talk a little bit about the Carolina series coming up. Head coach Jerome Bichard and forward Alex Dortehan in studio with us here. It's the Behind the Bench Coaches Show presented by Mike Costello Law.
And welcome back on the Behind the Bench Coaches Show. Tom Callahan here with you, joined in studio by head coach Jerome Bichard and by Alex Storjahan as we talk about the upcoming uh, playoff series this weekend against the Carolina Thunderbirds. And guys, before we get to that, and uh, Storage, we can start with you on this one. But uh, what was the mentality when you when you were up five nothing? Because I know we we're talking a lot before the break about what Boomer was preaching, but I, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little concerned because <laughs> at the five, they were such well placed shots. Everything seemed to work out. It was all flowing for you, but it just you know you worry about that. It's like oh geez, that seemed almost too easy. Yeah, it uh, you know, going up like that, it can. It can be easy to sit back, um, and I think that might be a bad crutch that we have on this team. But, um, you know, I'm not too worried about that because in that, you know, if the game's tight, we uh, we don't tend to do that. And uh, when you're up five, you can afford to, as <laughs> upset as <laughs> Boomer can be, and we do want our level of play to be as high as possible at all times. Um, yeah, it can be the trickle-down effect of bad habits and you try to make up for someone else's laziness fortunately or unfortunately i don't know how you want to look at it i don't think we're gonna have that problem with uh, carolina yes i agree they they definitely push you and i mean this these two teams i i've heard a couple people say that basically they feel like this is the final so i'm not i'm not gonna speak to that i don't want to unless you guys want to get into that but i mean it's it's gonna be a pretty darn good series yeah, no, you know what? Um, obviously, Babic is their go-to go -to guy. He's played phenomenal every time we've played him. Um, I'd like to say the last four games that we played against him, um, we, I think, I don't know, I could be wrong, I think we outplayed them uh, for the most part, um, didn't capitalize on our opportunities, and, you know, every time – we made somewhat of a mistake, whether it was a big one. A couple of them were big ones. Uh, a couple of them, just normal stuff. They capitalize on their opportunities, so that's the difference. They get, they got guys that, uh, um, well, back up a little bit. I mean, this past weekend, you know, on Friday night, you know, we capitalized just about on everything. Um, whether Babin was terrible or whatever but everything we did w went in and w w did it right um i don't think that's going to be the case uh, f uh as much with these guys but when we have our opportunities we just got to nail it and bear down and and uh and put it in and storage what do you see when you look at carolina good goaltending and guys who can put the puck in the net um i mean their d can be physical like they're not easy to play against but I don't think they're too much to worry about as much as their forwards are. I think we're pretty similar groups. Um, so it comes down to who has the puck more and who's going to bear down, who can ramp their play up the highest individually and then, you know, as a group. And uh, I have a lot of confidence. You know, we may have not won the season series and they took that first place in the division, but I know we, out, we outplayed them those last four games. Does that also – kind of leave you that little extra burning spark of inspiration to know that you feel like you could have won that division and you didn't? Yeah, I mean, it feels like, you know, that could have been their big big climax for them and, you know, could have been for us if we won. So that's the way I like to think about it is we're still not at our peak yet. We don't do anything easy. <laughs> uh, we do everything the hard way. We we all knew we were, yeah. We, we got guys who like to save it for the playoffs too. Um which is fine. Like, I mean, really be honest with you. I think, um, one, it really, you know, the only negative, the only negative that came out of, of us not finishing as first as this series, we don't have a home ice advantage. Right. Um, be honest with you, finishing where we did and playing motor city. I mean, the schedule is, was better. I mean, uh, it was a little easier, less uh, taxing on us and this and that. So um, I think that was good uh, when it comes down to that. Now, at the end of the day, um, you know, we need to win one in Carolina. I mean, I, I, I look at uh, 
our series against them. I think uh, other than that one uh, no-show there, the first game we played up there, everything, I mean, I think we m are pretty even with them as far as wins and losses. So, you know, uh, caveat, referees up there <laughs> is a different story. We need to be disciplined, shut our mouths, um, and just go play. Uh, they tend to – I was watching the game against Port Huron, and they teed up Port Huron like three times or at least once or twice, five on three. Like, they don't take any crap. That five on three in the third period of that game, I thought once Port Huron actually killed that off, like maybe it's their night. Right. I thought it might have been. Yeah. And, I mean, they end up pushing them over time. That, that was a heartbreaker. They gave up that goal late. Oh, yeah. that hurt. Yeah. No, and they uh, they do that – you know, uh, Panachuk, uh, you know, you can't take a, a shift off against that guy. Um, and Pastuka, like, I mean, uh, Yuri was here for a year playing defense, playing wherever, trying to fit in, and obviously he learned how to play um, as a forward. Maybe, Well, actually, he was a forward and trying to play D, and obviously that wasn't needed uh, that's not where he needed to play um he's got a great shot and he's dialed in and i don't know if he sees it all the time or not but he puts it there and you know a lot he's had a lot of success so um you know you got gus Ford, that uh little guy not a great skater uh, likes to shimmy and shake move his shoulders and not go anywhere and tends to get guys to not hit him you know makes plays goes to the right areas at the right time uh this and that, so we've got to be aware of them. Stories will shut them down. That's that's probably who's going to end up uh, playing against them. Um, and then, uh, uh, and then you know their th their third line, which is a buzz line. Uh, uh, Hussey, uh, PV. Well, last time we played him, PV was playing D or whatever. Yeah. So they're just hard working, you know. And they got guys put puck net on that line too. So. Yeah, well, both teams, I think, have the depth, especially with scoring. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, storage, we talk about your line going back together, but, I mean, there's guys up and down that forward core that can put the puck in the net. Yeah, yeah. I mean, both lineups, so it's going to – how many guys can raise their level of play higher than the other team and then comes down to bounces and outworking them. So it's being but, harder to play against. And as you mentioned, I mean, there are, it's, there are guys who do pick it up in the big moments, right, who pick it up for the playoffs. They just – find an extra level i guess you can look at that one of two ways it's like where's that during the regular season but then there are just some guys who go into a different gear well and you know what i mean contributing you know contributing in different areas of the game you know what i mean listening to nhl network today um it's not always it's not always about uh it's not always about scoring you know uh Look at, you know, Ryan O'Reilly goes from the first line to St. Louis to the third line in, in Toronto. I mean, you have to uh, cherish and relish that opportunity and, and, you know, that opportunity, what it is to win. Um, you know, I think, I think uh, Gretzky was on TV uh, yesterday on an interview or something TNT. like that. And, you know, he said something that, you know, kind of was pretty poignant, you know, in the playoffs. I'd rather li win two to one than lose six to five. Pretty poignant. Like, hey, like, I'd rather win two to one. Like, hey, let's shut it down. Let's do whatever, as opposed to open it up and you lose six to five, you know. Um, uh, great way to look at it. And whether you're – 35 goal score in the, uh, at the beginning of the year or at, at the end of the regular season, it's a new it's a new season in the playoffs um, and contribute wherever. Nobody's going to be nobody's going to be have their best game every single night. Right. right. Nobody's going to have that best game every single night. So what is going on in that game? You know, if I'm not not feeling it tonight, it's not going to go in. I got to change. I got to change. I'm going to, how do I contribute somewhere else? You know, I got to make sure I'm high. I got to make sure I'm back checking. I got to make sure I'm hitting. If it ain't going in, change it a little bit. Somebody else will pick it up. Okay. And that's, that's the type of team we have. We have three lines that can do it, you know, on every, on any given night. 
So and generating not only for your you know yourself but other guys too, right? I mean, you know, and storage to go back to your line. I mean, you've got. Kinger seems to be the distributor, but also, I mean, Kelly's got a shot. He's got moves as well. Both of you guys can put the puck in the net. Yeah, you always got to be ready for it when Kinger has it. And um, for me, it's that's where that chemistry comes in. I just know if I can beat a guy and I can get my own space, he's there's a good chance he'll find me or he'll at least see me. And then I like to distribute too sometimes, and it's good to have Kelly there. Um, but you know, as long as as long as pucks are going north and we have the puck. Um, and we're working to get it back, then good things are going to happen. Absolutely. So we have the series coming up this weekend against Carolina. Um, do you guys, uh, once you get into the playoffs, we've mentioned the regular season series. How much stock do you put into that regular season series? Are you just uh, throw the records out the window, or do you try to take some of that with you? How do you treat it? I mean, they there's a couple little little things. Like they know a couple of our plays. We know a couple of their plays. But for me, I mean, you know, we know what we're getting into. They know what they're getting into. So it's who can, who's going to go into that battle and, and win. You know, I think uh, um, obviously game within the game. I mean, uh, uh, again, we need to be disciplined. Um, they got a couple guys that get under, get under people's skins, uh, Schnapp, Bazarin, um, Rowe. Um, Austin Baker, maybe, or whatever. Uh, those two aren't too, too bad. But the other two really like to play that role and push the edge. And at the end of the day, we the only people that make them relevant is us. Um, go play. I mean, at, at this point of the year, it doesn't really matter what they do. Um, if they want to run around and, and um, make a scene, let them. Um, suck it up, get them at the right time, if there is a time. If not, then don't worry about it. But, I mean, um, that's that's the biggest thing is is controlling that emotion right there. We need emotion. we just got to be controlled. Controlled chaos. Do the guys realize they're hearing this piece of advice from the guy who used to be that guy? <laughs> Does that ever sink in, you know? Well, that's maybe why they don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know what? Uh, and I mean that in a positive way. Like no, you're no. trying to tell them this well, is how you could have diffused. You well, know. you know what? I mean, you don't get as many penalty minutes as I do without, you know, getting caught, getting shrapnel and all that stuff. Sure. And for the most part, I mean, I led, I led the league in minors every year. Um, majors, eh, you know, I get my fair share, but minors every year. But I'd like to, I'd like to have somebody pull stats you know, for the most part, when I was taking one, I usually was bringing somebody with me. Um, you know, so, you know, anyways. They trade a couple of two-handers. A, lot of, both a, a, lot, of, a lot of everything that I did was very calculated. I knew what I was doing. I right. mean, do I get caught? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, anyways, I don't know. Well, and that's where the, again, the, the turn the other cheek and, hey, pick your moment. You know, take a number, get back to them. So I know there's a lot of want for that instant gratification to put the glove in the guy's face right away, but oh uh, well, that was my uh, that was my specialty as far as that go. I mean, I would, <laughs> I would take a beating. Uh, you can beat the hell out of me all day long. I'm gonna suck it up, suck it up, suck it up. Let you take a penalty, let, do all that stuff, and then the one time that you're not ready, now it's coming, and then they would be ticked off. Because you caught them. Because they caught them, they weren't ready, right. and now they want to do it again. I'm like, hey, you had your chance. You're not getting another one here. Not tonight. You know, we'll wait, have to wait uh, another time. I'm like, just, you know, I, I remember one uh, one series against Memphis. Uh, they were first place. We were last. We snuck in the playoffs. Um, and literally for the first five minutes of the game, I sat on the bench. They are five knuckleheads. I was going to say a different word, <laughs> but there were five knuckleheads sat on the bench just frothing at the mouth, and they just sat there. Prior to that, I got five slashes and warm up from the knuckleheads that were lined up at the red line, and you know I'm like, yeah, oh, this is going to be fun tonight. You know, everyone, right. a lot of people would just shut down and probably go sit on the bench and not even warm up. <laughs> I mean, you know, for five minutes, 
I'm like, coach, let's go. Let's get this thing rolling. After that, there are five guys all come after me, and they're in the box most of the night. We win the we win the series, swept them three nothing, I think, uh, um, and that was it. And they were a guy tried to run me over in the in the parking lot after the first game. Uh, wow. I mean, just like like, dude, it's a game, man. Uh, I mean, anyway, so. Uh, Control your emotions. <laughs> yeah. Storage, have you ever tried to run anyone over no. in the parking lot? No, no. Leave it on the ice. Leave it in the ring. Have you ever been an attempted victim of someone running you over in not, the parking lot? Not that I can remember. You know, I do like to mix it up here and there. Um, I think I like to, you know, I usually take another guy with me sometimes. You push the limit. I yeah. I like to guy. play on that line. Um, I say I can whack it with the best of them. But no, never anything <laughs> that severe. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, never it's played in Memphis, though. Good times. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Back in the day. All right, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have more of the Behind the Bench Coaches Show coming your way in just a moment. Welcome back on the Behind the Bench Coaches Show. Tom Callahan here with you, and we are joined as we are every week by head coach Jerome Bichard. This week's player guest, Alex Storjahan, number four. And uh, he's got four goals in the playoffs already this year and tied for the league lead in that category. So let's keep that ball rolling for sure. And the River Dragons offensive output has been pretty good so far. Defensively, certainly don't want to slight Brendan Colgan, who's also looked fantastic. Um, and, uh, you know, Storch, just give us your thoughts here. The strengths of this River Dragons team, what is the most important thing to you? I know we've we've hit on some themes here throughout the show, but when you're looking at this club right now, like what are maybe one or two things that stick out to you that say this is why the River Dragons have what it takes? Um, definitely depth when, uh, you know, all our guys are dialed in and focused. There's absolutely nobody that can play with us. Um, speed uh, and experience. I'd say experience is right up there. There actually are quite a few guys. The more I go over the roster, like guys who have either won it, been to the final, like it just it shocked me how many players on this team have that experience. Yep, and you know up top too with Boom and um, Jeff. I don't know, top to bottom, we have we have a lot of experience and a lot of calm, calm energy, poise, and and just sneaky confidence. I would say. How much do you draw on that? How much does that help you? Like, if it's a tough moment, you know? I mean, last year, my, you know, I played 15 regular season and then right into the playoffs and then in the finals. I know it, it was a calming presence to, you know, lean on Petro and Dozer and Krupe and Schultz, some of those older guys. So Now you're one of those guys who's been there last year. I mean, not to make you sound like an old man, but. Yeah, my, my perspective's a bit different. You know, I don't want to, I wouldn't say I waited around last year. I wanted to you know, play my game and contribute and be the guy. But now I know, like, this is what it takes and this is what we got to do. So, Boomer, same question for you. What uh, maybe one or two things when you look at this River Dragons hockey team that stick out to you as a reason why you think, hey, these guys have that potential? Uh, I think our goaltending. Um, um, I think uh, <clears throat> our same thing with uh, storage, our depth, when everyone's rocking and rolling. Um there's three lines uh, dialed in. Like I mean, the last two weeks, uh, last two, two, three weeks have been really dialed in hockey, um, and I don't know. I can I can see a definite definite change. Um, you know, I think I think as a coach, my worst my worst trait as a coach is me being one too lenient, big heart, wanting these guys to feel creative and and be able to you know have some fun out there, um, which I tend to leave things open ended. Well, guys, on this play, there's three things. You know, it's this, 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 and this, and you know what? They make the hardest play out of all three of those, and it bites us in the butt. Right where. If I say, hey, let's do the simplest one and let's do the simplest one where everybody knows where everybody is and all of a sudden we have success because it's easy and everyone knows where the puck's going before going there 
And if they defend that, then we have different options to go to or whatever. But I think that's the difference between uh, three weeks ago and the last couple of weeks is we've kind of really honed in on some of that. And we have really high, high hockey IQ, but because of that, that tends to get us into trouble. Okay. That, well, that makes sense. I, I understand what you're saying there because – Sometimes it can be paralysis by analysis, right? You you have those options. You're trying to think. Well, if you think, I mean, let, storage will go back to your goals too. I mean, again, especially that one, the game winner, two and a half minutes left, boom, off your stick, you know, and you, you know you're putting it on net. You know the puck's coming out of the corner, even on a broken play like that. And I, I think maybe fans sometimes are like, well, why don't you just do this? And it's not always that simple. You know, sometimes that isn't there. Sometimes you have to know what your options are, and that's where you have to have the IQ to make that secondary play. Right. No, I mean, I think uh, when it comes down to it, I think our skating, our skating ability uh, from top to bottom is pretty high. Um, I think that's a huge trait. Obviously, goaltending. Um, our depth is pretty good. Um, and I believe um, – everybody's kind of bought in as far as playing uh, defense as well. Um, and again, today in, in video, if we watch, if we watch our last three weeks of hockey and we looked at all of <coughs> our goals against, it's all from our goals against isn't from uh, lazy plays or this and that. It's a, it's all comes down to, me being physical at the right time. I'm like, well, we kind of talked about it. Hey, all you have to do is run into that guy over on the half wall, and that would have stopped everything. Would have stopped everything. As opposed to that guy gets it, he passes it, and I'm right here, and then I go to the puck. We all go to the puck uh, type thing. So just eliminate guy. You've done your job. That guy's accounted for. He's back there. Um, meanwhile, we all come back to the middle, and everyone's looking – and waiting for somebody to do, I need somebody to do, right? And that first guy, just go, go. We got layers. We have layers of defense that should be back. Go, hit, physical, don't worry about the puck. And that's – it sounds simple when you say it too, you know, and then again it comes down to the execution of it all because there's another team on the other side of the ice trying to execute their game plan and run you over well, at the same time. You, you, got Gus Ford, you got Gus Ford – that I mean, great little hockey player. All he does is shake his shoulders. Just keep that crest shakes right it, in the crosshairs. Shakes his shoulders, and uh, everyone's just looking at the puck. I'm like, guys, look right there. Yeah. He ain't going anywhere. He's not going past me. Look right here, and he just gives you a little shimmy and uh, a little here, there, and and he walks right through the middle. I'm like, guys, just stare him, stare him somewhere where he doesn't want to go. He doesn't want to go to the boards because he don't like to get hit. So put him there and hammer him. Yep, absolutely. And that uh, that's the other thing, too, is it's its a time of year when physical play doesn't necessarily mean blowing a guy through the glass, right? But it does mean leaning on him, finishing the check, following yeah. through with all that. Yeah, no, and then, and, you know, uh, on the other side of it, in the offensive zone, I mean, we need to create time and space there and, and throw the puck around and – and beat guys back to areas, um, back to back to areas, um, and throw the puck to that area and beat guys back. So um, it's going to be interesting. It'll be a good. It'll, it'll be a good series for sure. Um, you know, uh, for on a positive note, we start home. We start at home. Um, we got to jump on them early. Um, we got to jump on them early and uh, and uh, make sure that uh, they know they're in a battle. Absolutely. All right, let's take a break here. When we come back, we'll have a little bit more going on for the Behind the Bench Coaches show. And don't miss, towards the end of the show, we've got, I'm just going to call it Undies Updates. Kirk Underwood's coming in studio. He's going to break in and uh, let us know what's going on ticket-wise. I know a lot of you have had ticket questions for Friday night's game. He's going to come in. He'll answer those, so stay tuned towards the end of the show. We'll be right back with more in just a moment.
And welcome back on the Behind the Bench Coaches Show as we are back broadcasting live from the PMB studios where we are every week for the show. And uh, also want to say hi to our radio affiliates out there. And if you're listening in Noonan uh, at 820 tomorrow morning, Paul Frazio is going to be on the morning show, 99.1 WQEE out in Noonan. So just a little heads up for you there. As we wrap things up here with head coach Jerome Bichard and uh, forward Alex Storjahan as we look ahead to this weekend series with Carolina. Obviously a big one going on. And uh, you know what, Storch, now that you've gotten through that first series, um, and we haven't really talked about this yet, but, I mean, as I said at the top of the show, I thought Motor City was by far the more difficult matchup. Scheduling-wise, it was nicer. But Motor City was the tougher, I think, of the two. Do you like having that test right out in front of you and then getting through it the way you guys did? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it didn't give us a chance to maybe overlook Port Huron like maybe we would have, but. Um, you know, Motor City, they don't have really any guys you circle on the on the sheet and go, okay, we need to shut this guy down. They're just kind of not misfits, but just a bunch of, you know, grinders who they, they make you earn it. So I think that was a good – puts us in the right mindset and uh, gave us confidence knowing that, you know, kind of just beat them up pretty well. So Also, I imagine the confidence of knowing that, you know, hey, game one was tight and then game two just – it seemed like that was finally back to River Dragons hockey. Yeah, I mean, I think we just beat them up in the first game, and like I said, we took it from them, and a tough, it's a tough pill to swallow. And, uh, you know, our barn's not the easiest place to play. It definitely is not, and that you've got going in favor for you. Friday night, game one, 730 for everybody. We'd love to have you come down, but, uh, I mean, boom, you've been in this building a long, long time. And what's it like in the in the playoffs once you get a little bit deeper now? <laughs> yeah, no, the uh, momentum kind of builds. Uh, the fans can kind of get into it. Uh, you know, the town gets into it. They're all uh, wishing well, and you know, signs are up, go Dragons, or whatever, and all that stuff. So, um, pretty special, pretty special time. Um, again, you got to go out and perform now. I mean, right. uh, you got to go out and perform. We've, you know. Uh, back in the day, we were in the finals uh, three years in a row and uh, won one and lost two. And the one, one one was a tough one at home, not good, losing the last two at home. Um, and you know what? Again, you look at the NHL right now, uh, look at the Maple Leafs get blown out the first game. Much rather get blown out than have a heartbreaking two-to-one loss in overtime or whatever that is. I mean, that's devastating. It hurts. You know, you get blown out. Hey, both know that we're not that bad. We're right. we're a good hockey team for whatever reason. Things didn't click, bad bounces, this and that, or whatever. Um, so, you know, on that note, um, you know, the way we're dialed in right now, um, you know, the last couple of days in practice, we're pretty sharp. Everyone's dialed in, not one guy dogging it, not one guy putting – you know, half effort in on anything, and everybody's dialed in. It doesn't make it doesn't make anybody mistake free, but they're dialed in and know. So, and you know, so let's let's go ahead and shift over. You brought up the NHL, so I'm going to bring it up to you guys. First round, right now, you're <coughs> looking at it. Any big surprises? Have anything that you thought is going the way you maybe thought it would? Um, you know what? I mean, uh, not any big surprises. I think everything's kind of shaking out the way it is like uh edmonton the edmonton series toronto series you know a lot of ifs um a lot of ifs and if you would have you know said like last night against toronto if you would have said toronto comes back and w- beats that game there's no way right um which just goes to show um whatever the nhl has put in and how they how their rules have changed or not changed just started calling stuff or whatever it opens up the game so much where you're never out, you know, you're never out uh, in the playoffs. You should, you should be locked in, but depending on a, a bad, a bad break, a bad call, whatever. And there are bad calls. Um, you know, just don't be that. Don't put yourself in that position to make that bad call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, type thing. So, uh, you know, it's great. It's great entertainment and it's good. And, uh, you know what? just goes to show anybody can beat anybody at any given time yep storage what do you think about what's going on uh, i think a lot of people slept on seattle maybe and they uh you know they're tied with colorado 
Uh, they know McCarr is out uh, one game. Uh, you know what, Colorado? I mean, oh, that's they're not, injured. They're banged that, up. That's not the same team as they had last year. Goaltending's you know, a bit weaker and goaltending and a bunch up. of injuries and this and that. And you know what? I mean, obviously one guy can make a difference, but you know if you look, uh, obviously I'm an Edmonton Oilers fan, yeah. right? <laughs> right? Obviously I am. <laughs> but if you look, one guy can make a difference but isn't going to win you a championship when it comes down to it you know um you know colorado the year before you know number one all year long get blown out in the playoffs last year they built their team around everybody you know and don't get me wrong mckinnon mccarr huge different makers in a game right but it's everybody you know um at that in the playoffs you need 20 guys pulling the rope uh, and everything that we just talked about the intangibles the go-to guys say hey, you need your best players to be the best and you need your average players to be better than their average players and to make a difference and w- however you contribute blocking shots physical play whatever it is uh, i mean that's what it takes to win a championship I think my two takeaways are, number one, I agree with you, sleeping on Seattle. Seattle won that season series. Yeah. And now there's no Nikushkin. Now they have McCarr suspended for tonight. They don't have Landis Cog. I mean, Seattle looks pretty good to to win the series tonight. Uh, or not tonight. It's game five. They're tied at two. But the other thing is, too, Tampa Bay. I've been wondering, when does the air come out of the balloon? I think Tampa Bay has played so much hockey the last several years. I mean, just – at some point, you gotta get tired. You're you're playing the max every year, and it just it's gotta catch up. Well, I think uh, Vasilevsky's kind of not lost his game, but he's he's uh, again listen to the <laughs> NHL Network. He's got happy <laughs> he's got happy feet. He's got happy feet. He's all over the map. I mean, at some point, you can almost be too aggressive and too active, and um, I don't know. Uh, um, I think they were talking about uh, Lalonde was their uh, assistant yeah, coach. Portland alum. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah, and, how he was kind of. And, and he was a goalie when he played. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, he, was, yeah. he, gave up, he gave up Vasilevsky's inaccurate. In, inac, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? In. Um, and ac- uh, his problems. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's just very active, and they, right. did, they did a. Uh, uh, you know, they did some numbers on him, and he was susceptible to high screenshots, like sh- shooting from the point, and he's not good in traffic. Well, first of all, nobody like your goalie. Nobody likes traffic. Yeah. No, right? Nobody no. likes that. If I can't see it. How am I going to stop it? But at the same time, I mean, if he's given up ninety percent of the goals that he gives up, and they're all from out far uh, out, you know, from the point and and tra- high traffic areas and shots getting through, you know, that's where. Toronto, uh, you know, won the game. Yeah, yeah, and so. they got a couple D who are hurt. Too, yeah, to no, so hey, it's all timing. It is, it is inadequacies. By the way, that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know that. Word. That would. That, that, I do that know that word. In ag- I was close. I was stumbling on it. That's. It took me a second to play the the yeah, wordle in my head and get to it, but I did. All right. My but, vocabulary is fairly strong. I yeah, just uh, yeah, stumble yeah, around. Guy, yeah. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us this week. Appreciate it. And hopefully Kirk Underwood's about ready to join us in the studio. If not, you'll just be hearing from me here on the other side of this break as we wrap things up. But good luck on the weekend, fellas. And uh, we'll see you for game one Friday. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Tom. All right. We're back with the conclusion here of the Behind the Bench Coaches Show in just a moment. All right, back to wrap things up on the Behind the Bench Coaches Show. It's the uh, annual installment of Undies Updates here. Kirk Underwood joining us. And, uh, Kirk, what do we have going on? I know – People have been asking about tickets for Friday night's game. So what's the story? Yeah, exactly. Especially after last week, right, where we had a little bit of a mishap with Ticketmaster, uh, unfortunately for that first game at home in playoffs. However, this week is a different story. Thankfully, we made it to the second round versus the Carolina Thunderbirds, which I'm sure you were talking a bit about today. Just a little bit. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so our first uh, our game of the second round here is going to be Friday night at 7.30 p.m., and we are trying to pack the Civic Center. We are absolutely trying to sell out every single seat, considering it is one of the biggest games of the year. Probably the biggest game so far in the season. 
Now, real quick, Kurt, I don't think people necessarily know this, but you can still buy groups. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and that is exactly why I came on. And that is how we're trying to pack it, right? Is we are trying to get you guys in, in groups of 10 or more. That is what we consider a group, 10 people or more. And you can reach out to me two ways. One via email, which is Kirk, you at ignite sports, USA.com. That is K I R K U at ignite sports, USA.com or via telephone. And that number is going to be 720-975-5306. Undy, thanks for coming out. And by the way, the more tickets you buy, the bigger the discount. Exactly. Want to throw that out there. All right. Well, Kirk, we're gonna we might do this on a regular basis. Thanks for stopping that. in, brother. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Friday night, game one, seven o'clock. This has been the Behind the Bench Coaches Show, presented by Mike Hostelo Law.